Good day, learners. This is another great opportunity to learn something wonderful on this platform. Today we shall be discussing about crop plant forms. At the end of this lesson, the learners should be able to explain how the parts of plant are classified. Explain the functions of different parts of plants. Explain monocotyledons and dicotyledons. They are also known as monocots or dicots. Parts of plants. The parts of a plant can be classified into two systems. We have the root system and the shoot system. The root system consists of the roots only, while the shoot system consists of leaves, stem, flowers, and functions of different parts of a plant. The roots. What are the functions of the roots? The root holds the plant firmly to the ground. It absorbs water and mineral salts from the soil and passes them to the stem. The root stops plant food. It, use, it is used for aeration. Plants that grow in stagnant water and other watery places have modified roots called pneumatophores to which oxygen from the air diffuses. What are the functions of a stem? A stem conducts water, mineral salts, and manufacture food to other parts of the plant. The stem bears the leaves and flowers and also holds them in a good position. It stores plant food. What are the functions of the leaf? The major function of the leaves is to manufacture food for the plants through the process called photosynthesis. Transpiration takes place in the leaf. Leaf stores plant food. The function of the flower. The flower is a reproductive organ of the plants. It produces the seeds and fruits after pollination. Crop plant form. A crop is a plant cultivated by a farmer for a definite purpose. This is one of the difference between a crop and a plant. Any green organism around a living thing can be a plant. The difference between a plant and a crop is that a plant can just be there, but a crop is deliberately cultivated by a farmer for a definite purpose. Crops belong to the class of plants known as flowering plants or angiosperm. They can also belong to the non-flowering plants known as genosperm. The bodies of the flowering plants are differentiated into two subclasses. Our, our attention will, will basically be on the flowering plants, not the non-flowering plants. Now, the bodies of the flowering plants are differentiated into two subclasses or forms. We now have the monocotyledons and the dicotyledons. Mono simply means one, while di simply means two. Then, what is cotyledons? Cotyledon means natural leaf born of a seed of a plant. It is also known as the seed leaf. Monocotyledons. 
These are plants which have been, which have one seed leaf, also known as one cotyledon. Examples of such plants are palm, maize, rice, onion, grasses, guinea corn, barley, wheat, oat, rice, banana is part of them, and many more. Now, from the picture here, what we have here is just the characteristics of monocots, which, as we go further, we'll see the explanation. Characteristics of monocotyledons. They possess one seed leaf. They have fibrous root system. The leaves are long and narrow. The leaves have parallel venation. If you look at the leaf by the side, you under, you see there is straight lines on it. Those straight lines are known as leaf venation. For monocotyledon, it has parallel leaf venation. The leaf stalk or petals is absent. Have a single erect stem without branches. Flower parts are in multiples of three. If you look at it now, we have one, two, three, four, five, six. There are multiple of three, that is three, six, nine, twelve, fifteen. The flower parts of a monocot are a multiple of what? Of three. Then the stem vascular bundle are scattered. This is a stem vascular bundle. They are scattered. Germination of the seed is hypogee. Basically, we have two types of germination: the epigee germination and hypogee germination. Now, uh, the, the the hypogee germination is a type of germination where the the cotyledon remains remain below the soil level, while the epigee germination is a type of germination where the cotyledon is above the soil level. We shall see that as we go further. The cotyledons. Now, if you look at the picture here, if you have ever seen a, one of the major demonstrations to differentiate between a monocot and a dicot is that get the seed of a corn and then the seed of uh, beans or granules. Now, if it is for beans, just soak it in the water for like two or three minutes. You will now be able to remove the bag. It has a very soft bag. Then peel it up. When you peel it up, you find that there will be a kind of lateral line around the seed. You can easily split the seed into two. That is what we consider as a seed leaf. But that of a corn, you cannot split it into two. All you can is to break it. But for, me, for beans or granules, you can easily split them into two. That is what we mean by seed leaf. If you look at the picture here, this is a picture of a, of a beans. It's just simply splitted into two. Now let's look at their cotyledons. Now these are plants with two seed leaves, cotyledons. Example, we have the citrus, cocoa, cashew, mango, granite, soya beans, uh, cowpea. Cowpea is also known as beans, melon, butter leaf, pigeon pea, carrot, guava, and the rest of them. Now, dicots are those plants that their seeds have two seed leaves, meaning you can easily split them into two. Let's look at the characteristics of a dicot. Now, we say they have two seed leaves. This is also an example. This should be a bean that just split it into two. Then, they possess tap root system. In fibrous roots, I mean in dicot, in monocots, the roots are fibrous root system, but in dicot they are tap root system. Tap root system are type of root system with definite roots and then other secondary roots attached to it. But uh, in, in fibrous root system, there is no definite roots. Now leaves are broad and short, unlike the monocots, that the root leaves are long and narrow. The leaves are leaves have net venation in monocot the leaves have parallel venation but if you look at it here 
is next to the nation. They have livestock. You can see the livestock there is also known as Peter in Monocot. There's nothing like that. And they possess main stem and several branches, unlike the monocots that have one single erect system. I mean erect stem without branches. Flower parts are in multiple of four or five, unlike the monocot that is in only in multiple of three. But this one is in multiple of four or five. If you look at the count of flower parts, say one, two, three, four, five, and then one, two, three, four, five. The yellow parts, if you count them, they're into five. And the purple parts, if you count them, they're into five parts. Now, stem vascular bundles are in ring form, unlike the monocots that are scattered. Germination is germination of seed is epigeal, unlike the monocot that is hypogeal. Differences between monocotyledons and dicotyledons. Now, if you look at the table here, you can find the differences between a dicot and a monocot. Now, the monocot will say the embryo. With a single with cotyledon, while this one would cut Well, we are taking up the empire, we are taking up the seed. Pollen with single furrow or pore, pollen with three furrows or pores. Now, flower parts in multiple of three, this one flower parts in multiple of four or five. Major leaf veins are parallel, while this one are what are uh, reticulated, meaning they are in next form. Stem vascular bundle scattered. This one stem vascular bundle in the reform. Roots are advent adventitious or in the fibrous. While this one roots are from what radical. Secondary growths absent. This one secondary growths often present. Run parallel the length of the leaf. This one is what usually numerous auxiliary veins which reticulate between the major one. Fibrous root system, tap root system, hypogee germination, epigee germination. Now, to be able to differentiate between, between monocots and dicots, you can go back and study their characteristics. That will help you to get uh, a better way of differentiating monocots and dicots. Assessment. List two functions of the following parts of plants. Number one, flower, leaves, stem, and roots. Number two, A. Explain the following monocots and dicots. Number two, be right for characteristic for each of the plants from listed in 2a above. Then, number three, in a tabular form, write five differences between monocots and dicots. If you find this difficult to answer, go over the video again and you'll be able to answer it very simple.